Disney presents The Wonderful World of Color. On this wonderful world of Disney, an enchanted cat hauntingly returns to a little girl. But this unexpected reunion turns to tragedy. As she's no longer fighting, it's as if she's lost the will to live. Now a desperate father must risk his life to save his daughter and the woman he loves. Find your back, Mr. McDillie! On the exciting and explosive conclusion of the classic Three Lives of Thomasina, coming up next. And now we present the Three Lives of Thomasina. Here's your host, Walt Disney. The mystery of the cat. And you know they are mysterious. Although they're so familiar to us, we don't know much about them. Scientists say they're the most difficult animals in the world to make accurate observations about. Darwin himself admitted errors in some of his conclusions about cats. And uh, W.H. Hudson, a great naturalist, wrote that cats are mentally near to us, their brains function as ours do, their power of reflection cannot be easily distinguished from what we call reflection in ourselves. Now, as you saw in the first episode of our story, The Three Lives of Thomasina, a cat of personality can dominate people's thoughts and actions. But before we show you the story of Thomasina's second life, I want you to bear with me and listen to a song that was written about her and sung last week. So don't think you've seen the show before. <laughs> I want to play it, well, uh, because I like it. Then we'll go on with our story. Who is the most self-reliant animal made since the world began? Who can be the most defiant animal known to the world of In part one of our story, we met Thomasina, who lived in a small village in Scotland with the McDewey family. Andrew, the village veterinarian, his daughter Mary, and Mrs. Mackenzie, their housekeeper. Thomasina and Mary had a very special friendship. Every day, Mary dressed her up and took her out for a stroll. Good morning, Thomas. Good morning, Mary. Say good morning to Thomas and Bruce, Thomasina. Good morning, Thomasina. She's not in a very talkative mood today. Thomasina was content living with the McDewey family. But like all cats, she would get the urge to go out and see the world, especially on Wednesdays when she would visit the local market to dine on fresh fish. But one day, the local dogs were waiting for her. Thomasina was severely injured. A worried Mary went looking for her cat with her friends Jordy, Jamie, and Huey. We'll split up. Mary, you come with me. Jamie found Thomasina, and they quickly rushed the injured cat to Mary's father. But Andrew couldn't help because he was trying to save the life of Bruce, a seeing eye dog. Hey, Mary, go away from here. Daddy, it's Thomasina. She's hurt. Mary, you mustn't stay here. Just blame Thomas's dog here. He's badly hurt. Well, so is Thomasina. Mary. If you only look at her. All right, I'll look at her, but go away now, all of you. You make her well? You promise? Yes, yes, I promise, but go now, fine. I'm out, all of you. Unfortunately, this was a promise Andrew couldn't keep. See, there are some things your daddy can do and some things that he can't. What did you do to her? I, uh, had her put to sleep. There was nothing else I could do. No, you said you'd make her better. You promised, you promised. Mary, yep. I'll never speak to you again. Mary, please. You promised, and it killed Thomasina. She's dead. <laughs> Heartbroken, there was no way Mary could ever forgive her father. Look, child, I can't bring Thomasina back to life. What's done is done. Geordie, Jamie, and Huey decided that they should give Thomasina a proper funeral 
complete with an impressive procession through the village. As the children laid Thomasina to rest, a young woman named Lori was observing the ceremony. The local townsfolk believed she was a witch because she lived alone with sick and lost creatures. It was even said that she performed magic on these creatures. I of mute and head of dog, give me the power to cure the frog. Upon spotting Lori, It's the witch! She's coming for us. Run for it! The children, believing she was a witch, fled in terror. When Lori came down to investigate what the children were up to, she made an amazing discovery. What were they doing? Still so with Laurie, Thomasina begins her second enchanted life as we begin part two of the three lives of Thomasina. Time passed and I began to see and feel again. I couldn't remember any part of my first life, although something told me I'd lived before, that I was still me. I'd heard that a cat has nine lives. I accepted the fact. So... This was my second life. My life with a girl named Laurie. She was gentle and kind. I'll give her that. But she didn't seem to realize, and neither did the other creatures around me, how important I was. There we are. All of you, Dorcas, Mac, Molly, Whisker, be nice to Thomasina now. Be nice, she said. But none of the others paid any attention to me at all. They weren't really my kind anyway. Thomasina, dear, go and walk in the sun now you're able. There are others here who are not. I wasn't important anymore. Treated just like everybody else. how a king feels in exile. Huey, Jamie, quick! What is it? Come and see, quick! A badger. He's been in the trap a long time, and he's badly hurt. What'll we do with him? If we try and take the trap off, he'll only bite. We could wrap him up in a sack. Up and all and take him to the village. To the vet? To Mr. McDewey? We can't do that. We're trying to get rid of him. What else then? Couldn't we take the badgers to the witch? She's nearer. Aye, that's true. She couldn't cure a mess like that with magic. I bet she could. Mr. McDewey would only kill him. So let's wrap him up and take him to the witch. Jamie, get the things. I'll get the sack. now. You've got him? I got him. Seeing and hearing these boys gave me that I've been here before feeling. You know what I mean? I knew them and yet I didn't. They made me feel uneasy somehow. So I kept an eye on them. You're the eldest. You're always telling us. Aye, but... But it was Jordy's idea. He's too big for Jordy to carry. But if you're afraid... I'm not afraid of anything. Go on, then. Put him by the tree and ring that bell.
Oh, God, please, God, help me. Wait! Don't touch it. But it's hurt from that. Gin traps. Look what it's done to Find it. yourself. Drop it. It'll tear your throat out. It'll not harm me. No creature ever harms me because they're not afraid. Put it down, you man. I so I hear. Let me go. Let me I'm go. I'm sorry, but a wounded badger could half kill you. No creature ever harmed me. Don't touch him. Leave him to me. To you? Why, who are you? My name is McDewey. I'm the veterinary from Inveranoch. You are? Now I see. What do you mean? You have the skill that I haven't. The skill that I prayed for when I found the badger. Don't you see? You're meant to help him. And you must. Don't go! Got to get my instruments. They're in the car. God, you sent him. Please make him hurry back. On the next Disney Sunday movie, Tony Danza presents Mary Poppins, Snow White, Bambi, Never Cry Wolf, Fantasia, Alice in Wonderland, Pinocchio, and more. Join Tony for a salute to the best of the best, Disney's Oscar winners and nominees. The unforgettable songs, the unforgettable moments, the fabulous special effects. Tony Danza hosts a special trip down memory lane. Disney goes to the Academy Awards. Well, that's it. I will have to see how it ticks. Still, uh, hard to be creatures with great vitality. He has a chance. Bless you, and thank you for giving it the chance. Now, you have to stay quiet until the wound's healed. Have you got a place where you can keep him? Yes. these wild things in your care? Yes, they come here to me. Some instinct or guardian angel brings them. Uh, and uh, what kind of treatment do you give them? Food, warmth, comfort and love. And let nature take its course. And that mends them. And this? Oh, I found him one morning by the tree outside in a box. He had a broken leg, but he's better now. Well, I can describe his guardian angel to you. He's about six years old, red hair, and his name's Geordie McNabb. Well, keep your eye on the badger, Miss McGregor, and see that he doesn't tear off the dressing. Aye, I'll watch him. You know, um, in, uh, in Inveranak, they, uh, they call you witch. And if you can get all these creatures here to live together in peace, perhaps there's some truth in it. The truth is that they have security because they have no fear. Animals are not like people. They only fight and kill when they're hungry or afraid. Not for gain or to prove how strong they are. You don't have to be a witch to understand that. What made you come here, Mr. McDewey? Well, I, I thought that... Uh, there's no matter now. I must go. I've work to do. Wait, I must pay you for the work you've done. Uh, there's no need. Will you take this in from me? I made it here. Well, I'm glad to have it. Thank you. I knew the man, and yet I didn't know him. He reminded me of someone, something that was missing in my present life. What do you think he's done? But the witch wouldn't let him. Suppose we had a look through the window. It's our badger. We're responsible for him. Come on, Jordy. If she catches us, you can say you came to see how your frog was getting on. You want to know, don't you? Come on, then. Here. I think 
think he's dead. I told you Mr. McDewey would kill him. Here, Jordy, you, the smallest, climb up and have a look. one who brought the frog to me. He's better now his leg is mended. Do you want him back? Then come and see him. He's not very strong at hopping yet, but he can swim all right. He's going in with her. She must have put a spell on him. Here's your wee frog. Look. Oh, he's better. Did you do it with magic? With a powerful magic, Geordie. Do you know my name? Was it you who brought the wounded badger, too? Is he going to be all right, please? Did you do magic with him? No, that was Mr. McDewey. What he did was magic. Mr. McDewey, does he do magic? He has a wonderful skill that's almost magic. He saved the badger's life. Can I go now? Don't you want to take your frog? Thank you for killing my frog. I'm not afraid anymore. Well, not much, that is. I have to go now. Look, she cured the frog. But what about the badger? She cured him too. She put a spell on Mr. McDowey and made him help her. She's an awful good witch. Oh, Miss McGregor. So he came to see Laurie. It's but putting a stop to what she was doing soon went out of his mind. And he kept on coming to see her. watching you. If only I had the skill you have. How much of a way of taking the fear out of these wild creatures, making them trust you that I wish I had. But I'm a witch, remember? Oh, you must be. You cast some kind of a spell on them. I love them all. When they're lost or strayed or alone in pain, that's what they need. I feel for them. And you, with all your skill, do you? I give them what I have, my knowledge of what to do. I do my job. Is that all it is to you? You must have chosen to become a veterinary. Uh, no, my, my father, who is one himself, he chose it for me, and uh, he was a man that you didn't cross. No, uh, all my life I wanted to be a doctor, dreamed of it, and worked for it. Must have put a spell on me to make me tell you that, but except for my wife, I've never told another soul. Only she knew. You? Ah, she's dead now, about five years ago. You say you believe in providence and in God's mercy, and you wonder why I don't. How can you not? I love my wife. She did nothing but good. She went out nursing the sick in an epidemic, caught the sickness herself, and died. The will of God is inscrutable, they told me. God is love, they told me. Which is true. And that's what she believed. Yet the God who's supposed to be love allowed her to die. And therefore you reject him? Because your love died, his love has no truth? 
Is that what you mean? Ask yourself that when you've known pain. I saw both my parents drown, Andrew, in a storm at sea. But my faith didn't die with them. And they wouldn't have wished it, I know that. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Forgive? I'm glad you told me of yourself. And I told you. I. I'm glad too. I must go now. The man's coming back gave me that feeling once again of there having been some other time, some other place. And one night it came to a head. It was as if something was pulling me, drawing me on, and on, and on. I knew the way somehow, although I didn't know why or where I was going. story continues after these messages. If all you ever do is save, 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 Taco Bell has a deal for you. For a short time only, get two of our new soft tacos and a medium Pepsi for just $1.79. That's right, two, and a medium Pepsi for just $1.79. So hurry in and try our new soft tacos today, because even experienced savers have a soft spot for a hot deal. Get two soft tacos and a medium Pepsi now, just $1.79 at Taco Bell, the cure for the common meal. She's in bad shock. Could turn to pneumonia. I see signs of it now. I've done all I can for the moment. I'll be around first thing in the morning. Thank you, sir. Uh, what should I do? Keep taking her temperature every hour or so. It's just over 100 now. If it gets any higher, let me know at once. I won't leave her. Uh, show the doctor out, Mrs. Mike. And you better get out of those wet things, you know, you'll catch cold. I heard the shouting, saw the doctor arrive. Glad you came, Manx. I'm worried sick. If she should catch pneumonia. Aye, that's a great battle for a wee Ben to fight alone. Pray for her, Andrew. Pray for God's help and mercy. Pray. Yes, pray. Because if ever there was a man in need of mercy, it is you.
fight you, devil. You'll pay for this. Come on. What's he gonna do to the horse? <laughs> Let's go and see. I. Darvas, put the bear to his paces and wake him up. Come on, get up. Get him out. Get up. Uh, come on, get up. All right, get him out. Get him out. All right, come out. Get him out. Get him out. Now, come on. Down you come. Down. Come on, now, this way up. Up now. Get him up. Up and dance. Come on, you black. Get up and dance. Get up and dance. This one's worse than the other. The bear can hardly walk, let alone dance. What are you doing under there? Get up. Come, boys, get up. Gypsies in the glen, and you've got to do something about them. Aye, they're beating horses, and there's half starved dogs up there, and a poor bear with a sore foot. Cruel, Mr. McCauley. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. One at a time. Now. We were up there watching them, and they're beating their animals. Oh, they're awful people, sir. You've got to arrest them, Mr. McCauley. I've already told them to leave the district and move on. I gave them until tomorrow while they rest their horses. Rest them? You should see what they're doing. You bring me a complaint from the proper person and I'll act on it. I don't take orders from a lot of children. What proper person? The county officer concerned with cruelty to beasts, Mr. McDewey. Mr. McDewey? Hello, what's this? Houseberry, please, sir. We're sorry that she's sick. No, ah, she's very sick. We hope she'll get better soon. We haven't seen much of her since. Since the funeral of Thomasina. But we really came to see you about another matter, sir. What's that? To report cruelty to animals. There's some gypsies up in the glen, Mr. McTuy, with performing animals. They're awful cruel. They've got a bear with a sore foot and they make him dance. Constable McCoy said that if you were to examine them and report them to him, he could put a stop to it, sir. So would you do something about the circus animals? I, I, uh, I will when I can. Well, uh, run along now, all of you. He won't do anything. He wasn't even listening. Yes, he was. He said he'd go when he can. He doesn't care about those animals. Well, we can't do any more, can we? Yes, we can. We've got to. Hey, Geordie. We could tell the witch about it, Laurie. The witch? Aye, oh, why not? You say you're not afraid of her. You could tell her. Me? She'd maybe put a spell on those gypsies. Turn that pig one into a horse or a bear and learn for himself what it's like to be badly treated. I bet she'd do it. Go and tell her, Geordie. Go on, I dare you. Hello there. Can you ask me something, please? Will you come in then? It's better if I do. I brought you a present if you'd like it. It's because she cured my frog. Oh, Jody, you didn't have to do that. How is your frog? Oh, he's fine. This is my present. I made it myself. What a beautiful pipe rack. Thank you, Geordie. It's just what I need. I thought you might. I was we were wondering if you'd do something else with magic. Another frog? Oh, no. There's a gypsy circus down the glen with all kinds of animals and a bear and the people are awful cruel to them, beating them and that and they're half starved. Have you told the police? I and Mr. McDewey, but they won't do anything about it. Mr. McDewey won't? No, we asked him and he said so. We thought maybe you could put some red common gypsies to stop them. Would you please? The bear's got an awful sore foot. I'll go and see what I can do anyway, I promise you that. I knew you would. 
Oh, thank you. I have to go now. She's going to do it. She's going to put a spell on the gypsies. Our story continues after these messages. The Three Lives of Thomasina will continue after these messages. Does anybody have any change? said the fever must run its course. There's no crisis yet. He's done what he can for Mary. We're all of us praying for her. Praying? I humble myself and pray too. I'd crawl on my hands and knees if begging for her life would save it. She's lost and hurt, Angus. I can make no contact with her. <laughs> Someone who has the gift for hurt and lost creatures could unlock the child's mind. You mean Laurie McGregor? I do. Then ask her. Bring her here. She's unlocked your mind enough to make you realize you're not sufficient to yourself. Stay here with the child, Angus. He looked helpless and lost and frightened. the women speak of. Come on out, you! If you're in charge here, you should be ashamed. Your dogs are sick. These horses past work. The bear is... You're fighting. breaking my heart. All right, then. You dance, witch. <laughs> you do the bear's act for him. Come on. <laughs> for the bear. <laughs> look at him. Look at Mr. McDowie. Who's in charge here? I am. King Targu. What right have you to knock about my people? What exactly were you doing? Driving out the witch. Who set the evil eye upon it? Evil eye? I've heard about the evil that you do with these wretched beasts here. What do you want here? 
I have the power to close down your show for cruelty to animals. That's what I'm going to do. Ah, you'll pay for this. Get him and the witch! Find it back, Mr. McDoy! Not standing for this. Come on! Get my boys out of here. Keep clear of this. to Inveranach with the others to a doctor and not come up here to me. Stop! Listen to me. I am listening, Andrew. I'm a wee bit scared not to when you're so fierce. I was afraid of you down there in the fighting. And afraid for you. I came up here looking for you. Just like the other strays and the lost that come to you. Why? My daughter's sick with pneumonia. I need your help. I want you to come to her with me. Your house. Please come. Why me? Well, you have a, a kind of a magic for the hurt and the sick. And I've hurt the child so much that her sickness is the worst for it. You have? How? Well, she had a pet that she loved more than anything, and I had to have it destroyed. I, I didn't realize how much it meant to the child. But in, in doing what I did, I, I betrayed her trust in me. I, I killed something in her. Laurie, you prayed yourself once, didn't you? And you said that my coming here could be the answer to the prayer. Aye, it was. Well, I prayed too. And your coming with me now could be the answer to that. For me. For Mary. Will you come, please? Mrs. Mackenzie? Not so loud. We thought Mary being sick, we'd like to give her a message to make her feel better. Is she very sick, Mrs. Mackenzie? Aye, she's real bad. Dr. Stress is with her now, and the minister. We're waiting for her father to come home. It's about Mr. McDewey we're here. If you tell Mary, he's done something awful brave, and we're not against him anymore. Awful brave? Aye, he rescued all the circus animals that were being ill-treated, and saved them from a fire, and... The witch put a spell on him and made him do it. Oh, you and your witch. But he did rescue them. Oh, Jody. You see? Hermes friends. We'd best get home. So, he brought you. What have you been doing, man, to get in that state? Brawling somewhere? How is he? The same. What is this? Mary. Mary McDewey. Do you hear me? Andrew, may I take her? Do what you will. What does this woman think she's doing? Let her be. Andrew, there's so little of her left. When the man took Laurie away and they left me alone, I was frightened. I had to be with somebody. The feeling grew stronger and stronger. 
suddenly, like the lightning flash that split the tree, everything, my other lost life, came back to me. I knew where I belonged. I had to go home. 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 and nest her. She has. Is that the pet? Tomasina! 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 Right. Call her. Make her come in. No, you must. She must come to you. Tomasina. Don't you see that if Tomasina is the love your child has lost, only you can give it back to her. Call her. Make her come. Thomasina. Come to me. For the love of God, come to me. I knew him now. Matui, my murderer. And he needed me. Without me, he was lost. So this was my chance, the moment of truth for both of us. Thomasina, come to me. Yet, because of my second life with Laurie, Thompson. because of what I learned from her, I didn't want revenge. I wanted to Thompson. come home. what Jack in the Box calls this fajita pita. I love saying it. The only thing I like better than saying fajita pita is eating fajita pita. The new fajita pita at Jack in the Box restaurants. Marinated beef, onions, and cheddar with guacamole or salsa for serious fajita eaters. Fajita pita. Justin Morgan was a poor man with a dream to breed the first American horse. Morgan horses, by golly. A horse that could out-trot, out-pull, and outrun any horse in the land. Come on, stretch it out, big guy! Justin Morgan had a horse on the wonderful world of Disney next Sunday at 6 on Channel 7.
The Disney Sunday movie takes a proud look back at a magical man as Tony Danza hosts Disney Goes to the Academy Awards. The Disney Sunday movie, next on Channel 7.